Normally, I wouldn't be the one to do a disc review to talk about a new disc release, but this one is a little bit special. Today, we're talking about a distro that hasn't had a new release in 16 years, and just a few days ago, we saw the new alpha. That being the alpha for DSL, better known as Damn Small Linux. This distro exists in a fairly similar class to things like Anti-X and Puppy Linux. Distro is intended for really old hardware and intended to be really, really light. Now I mention Anti-X specifically because this distro is heavily based off of the work in that project. Back 16 years ago, the landscape for distros was very, very different. Back then, the entire distro image, and I don't just mean it's a TTY and has some terminal applications. It was 50 megabytes. It was a full featured distro with applications that you would expect to see, GUI applications, along with some additional things as well. That isn't really viable today. Things have ballooned just a little bit, and the new goal is to pack as much usable desktop distribution into an image small enough to fit on a single CD, or a hard limit of 700 megabytes. The current ISO is about 665 megabytes. In 2024, nearly everyone has abandoned the sub 700 megabyte size limit to run on computers old enough to not have a DVD and cannot boot off of a USB drive. This is completely understandable, because the applications, the kernel, and drivers have all mushroomed in their space requirements. Hats off to Puppy Linux for staying one of the few that still offer a full desktop environment in a small size. So let's have a look at the distro. Now keep in mind, when we are dealing with a size limit this small, full featured isn't going to mean GNOME. It's not going to mean KDE, it's going to mean very specifically chosen applications that oftentimes you've probably not heard of just to be able to meet that limit. Now, I'm currently running the Fluxbox desktop, but this is not the only option. If we go down to the menu, or we right click anywhere on the screen, we can go to exit, log out, and it'll take us back to our display manager. From here, if we press F1, we can cycle between the different options. Here we have a minimal Fluxbox. Basically, it's not going to open up Conky. We have Fluxbox, we have JWM, we have minimal JWM, and JWM. So JWM is the other option here. I'm going to log in with this one. Personally, I feel like they're basically the same. I know users of Fluxbox and JWM might argue which one is better, which one is nicer. Personally, they feel roughly the same. They both have a context menu on the desktop. You're going to interact with them in a very similar way. At least going by the way they are styled by the distro out of the box, I personally prefer the look of JWM, otherwise known as Joe's Window Manager, but functionally, you're going to work it out pretty quickly. If you click on the desktop, you get a context menu, there's a menu down the bottom, you work it out. But the important part is what apps do we have? Let's start with the web browser. It's not Firefox, it's not Chromium. What we have is a browser called Bad Wolf. This is a WebKit 2 GTK project. This is such a minimal browser that if I type in something like YouTube, it doesn't automatically do search with that. It assumes that every time you write in the URL bar, it is going to be a URL. So if we go over to www.youtube.com, it's not actually going to work because there is also this setting here to toggle JavaScript on and off. Make sure you enable that, reload the page. Give it a moment because we are on a virtual machine. And if we click this Veritasium video, for example, okay, we get an ad. I'm not watching the ad, but the player is working. There's also another browser option. Let's say you just don't care about JavaScript and you just want to read some fairly simple blogs. If we go to our context menu, into applications, into internet, we also have something called Dillo. Now, Dillo is basically just a GUI version of something like W3M, E-Links, and things like that. Do not expect full browser features here. And on the topic of those terminal-based browsers, we do have an option for that as well. If we go to our terminal, which is urxvt, and run w3m, 
that is available. Personally, I don't particularly like it, and I don't want hardware old enough where it really matters, but if you do, the option is there. What about word processing? You want to write a document. We do have an option for that as well. If we go to our applications, go down to Office, we have, firstly, Abbey Word. Now, Abbey Word, it is a functional document editor. Is it going to be as full-featured as LibreOffice? No. Is it going to let you write documents? Yes. Next, we have our spreadsheet tool. This is an application called GNU Merrick. Once again, fairly simple tool. It will let you make spreadsheets. If you want to do some, I don't know, home accounting, for example, it's enough to get that job done. But it's not going to be everything that you could possibly want. When you have 700 megabyte limit, there's going to be a pretty big limit. And also, we have a great PDF reader. We have Zathura. I love Zathura. It is an incredible application. Everybody should use it if you want a very simple PDF reader. And we also get an email client under the internet section, Silfeed Email Client. It is a GUI client, which might surprise you, right? Like, considering the limit here, it's not going to be Thunderbird. But if you want to send and receive email and sort through those emails, it's enough to do it. Or if you prefer, there is the terminal-based option, that being MUT. I don't have extensive experience with it. I'm a Thunderbird user. I'm a happy Thunderbird user. But I know there are some people out there that prefer this instead. Now, music playing is an interesting one because you would think that they just use a terminal-based option. That's not actually what happened. Instead, we have a project called XMMS, which kind of reminds me of Winamp. Like, it looks pretty much the same. What do you really need from a media player, though? Like, you just need to be like, click play, and it plays the music, and then stop the music, and have playlists. Like, it, it does that. But here's another application which I can't argue with. MPV as the video player. They also have a wrapper to automatically search your home directory to start playing things, but MPV is the only correct choice for a video player. Stop using anything else. I guess VLC also makes sense if you want a media suite, but if you just want to play video, just use MPV. We also get a drawing app, that being a project called MT Paint. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it it works, I guess. Like, it's, it's, it's not a good option, <laughs> but it works. If for some reason you still need to do FTP stuff, which I guess might be the case. We have GFTP for a GUI option, and we also get a GUI text editor. This is a project called Leaf. There's really not much that a text editor needs. Yeah, it's not a programming environment, of course. Like, you're not going to write code in this. But if you just want to modify a config, I would argue this is pretty much all you need. And your other option is basically as featureful anyway. You also have the option of Nano. I don't like Nano. Nano scares me. Instead, I prefer to use Vim. And where would you be without a file manager? Here we have ZZZFM, which you might recognize as the file manager from NTX. As I said before, this project is based on NTX, so there are some applications shared between the two projects. Again, is not a crazy featureful file manager, but it certainly does the job. Personally, though, I would prefer to use the terminal option, that being Ranger. Ranger is very good. It's not great out of the box. It takes a bit of configuring, but once you've spent the time to do so, you can have something really, really good. Personally, on my main system, I use a file manager called LF. This is basically like a re-implementation of Ranger. It's a lot lighter. It's not written in Python, but it's pretty much the same thing. And to my surprise, there's actually some games that ship with this system as well. There are two options. We have the terminal-based games, which comes with a couple. We have Vitrus Game, Space Invaders, Sudoku, Pac-Man, and Pew Pew, I think is how you say that. And we also have some graphical options. Gav, Tenmado, and Tuxpuck. 
Not games that I've ever really played a ton of myself. I tried them out a bit. They are games. Look, the dev had some extra space, so might as well just include them. Now, it's not just applications that we use to cut down the size. Though it may seem comparably ridiculous that 700 megabytes is small in 2024, when DSL was 50 megabytes in 2002, I've done a lot of hunting to find small footprint applications, and I had to do some tricks to get a workable desktop into the 700 megabyte limit. To get the size down, the ISO only has ENUS, ENBG, ENCA, and ENAU locales enabled, and I had to strip the source codes, so the source code is not actually shipped with the distro, many man pages, and documentation out. So, if we uh, open up a terminal, and let's say we want to see the man page for XRANDA, there actually is, I can't spell apparently, no man page for XRANDA. There's also no man page for man. Who needs it? Doesn't need to be there. And just random other things like LS, no man page. You know how to use LS. I don't even know what has a man page. I've not been able to find one. Throughout all of this, I've been showing you a blog post called Damn Small Linux 2024. If you want to see random other applications that are included, there are things mentioned here that I didn't specifically mention, like FZF, for example, Tmux, things of that nature. I'll leave it linked down below. So creating the original DSL, a versatile 50 megabyte distribution was a lot of fun and one of the things I am most proud of as a personal accomplishment. However, as a concept, it was in the right place at the right time, and the computer industry has changed a lot since then. While it would be possible to make a bootable X Windows 50 megabyte distribution today, it would be missing many drivers and have only a handful of very rudimentary applications. People would find such a distribution a fun toy or something to build upon, but it would not be usable for the average computer user out of the gate. This is going to take a bit of learning to work out how to comfortably use it. But I've never used JWM or Fluxbox, and I worked it out pretty quickly. You just click on the desktop, and you work out how to open up an application. Once you find something, you know, it's a little bit weird to work out some of them work, but they're not that terribly designed. They're not that well designed, but you can sort of fiddle your way around it and make it work. But if you don't like the applications, there is another option. Unlike the original DSL, this version has apt fully enabled. So if there's anything you feel is missing, it is very simple to get it installed. I also made an effort to leave as much of the anti-X goodness enabled as possible. However, it must be said that DSL is a derivative work, but also a reductive work. So some things from anti-X may be broken or missing. If you find a bug, it is likely my fault. So this is not a distro for the average user. Most people are going to use something like Debian, like Ubuntu, like Arch, like, I don't know, Fedora, something else like that. Because most people do have the ability to use a thumb drive or if they have to use a DVD. But if you have a system where your only option is installing from a CD or for whatever other reason, a 700 megabyte limit is just a lot more feasible, like say you have a really, really slow connection, or just don't have a connection that is stable, maybe something like this is worth having a look at. Otherwise, try out something like Puppy Linux. They also do great work over there as well. So, let me know your thoughts down below. Did you ever make use of DSL? Were you a fan back when it first came out? Are you using it today? Let me know. And if you liked the video, I said that. If you really like the video, you want to become one of these amazing people over here. Actually, did I say it? I don't know. Let me know if I said it. I'm not going to go back and check. Uh, people here, Patreon, subscribe, sign up, bureau pay, link in the description down below. That's going to be it for me, and I like my arch, though.